Today our three readings have a, a, a common theme and our gospel acclamation actually gives us an indication of what ties these three together. The gospel acclamation was, live in me and let me live in you, says the Lord. My branches bear much fruit. We're called to allow God to live in us. And we're called to live the way of God. We're called to live life. There have been people throughout history who think that Christianity is a dangerous religion. It's a dangerous faith and it should be eliminated from the earth. There have been different philosophers, different political leaders in the past and even in some parts of the world today who believe that Christians should just disappear. And when you look at the history of Christianity, it's a risky thing to be a Christian. Because being a Christian is not just looking inward. Each of our readings tell us that we need to go out. We need to go out and become Christ in the world. We're called to bring the message of Jesus Christ to others. And that's sometimes a very dangerous thing. Three weeks after Pentecost, the first Christian was killed for his faith because he was proclaiming the good news. His name is Saint Stephen. You may have heard of his story. He was stoned to death. It's talked about in the scriptures. Saint Paul and others. Saint Paul was, was Saul at the time. He'd whipped up the crowd and they killed this Christian. And then Christian after Christian in the early, the first three or four centuries was killed because they were living the way of Jesus Christ. It wasn't just something that was a personal thing. It's something that needs to come out into the world. And in one sense, that makes Christianity a very risky thing. It's a very dangerous thing to be a Christian. But it's a good thing. The challenge for us is, are we going to become so risk adverse that we hide our faith away? We come into a church and hope nobody sees us. And when we walk out the church, we won't let anybody know we're a Christian. We won't live that out in our life. And the three readings today are saying to us, we need to live it out. The gospel today is about the talents. God gives us talents, but he doesn't want us to bury them. We're called to go out and allow them to increase. God wants us to see what we do is to increase. God's given us so many great good gifts, but we can bury them away. We can hide them away, or we can share them for the betterment of humanity, for the betterment of our world, and to bring people into that love of God and the love of neighbour. And that's what we're called to do. Over the last nine months, our world has become very risk adverse. But I don't think it's just the last nine months and COVID. I think if you go back further, people have become very risk adverse. Workplace health and safety, these things are important. We shouldn't be doing things that intentionally are putting us in harm's way. However, being a Christian asks us and requires us to go out of ourselves to bring the good news to others. Today is the World Day for the Poor. And today we'll also take up our, our collection um, or begin to take up our appeal for the St. Vincent de Paul Christmas Appeal. Those who work on behalf of the church in charity are taking a risk. They reach out from their selves to go and help people they don't know who are in difficult situations. That's a risky thing to do. And right throughout history, that's what Christians have done. They didn't just hide away in themselves, but they reached out. And I think the challenge for us now, for those who are here in the church, but also perhaps for those who are watching at home, how do we reach out to live life as Christians is not to be completely isolated. Every day we take a step, we're taking a risk. Every day you've walked out of your house over the last six to nine months, you could say is a risk. Coming to church today is a risk. We manage our risks, but the risks are worth it. Talking to someone about the faith with the proper distance is a good thing. Helping someone who's in a hard situation is a good thing. And this is what Christians have stood for from the very earliest of times. The first reading today 
from the, um, the book of Proverbs talks about a perfect wife. And the perfect wife isn't one who nobody sees. The perfect wife is the one who's involved, who's there, con- you could say controlling, but who's there sustaining everything within a, a family and a community, who reaches out to the poor, reaches out in love and in kindness. We aren't called to be people of the dark who are hidden away, St. Paul says in this second reading. We're people of the light. The light cannot be hidden. And so our faith is not just something we experience for the moments we're here in a church on a Sunday morning. Our faith is lived out into the world. It's a risk to do that. Christians throughout history have been killed for their faith. Even in my lifetime, I've been ridiculed for my faith but it's made me stronger. Strangely enough, when I was at university, the very first Catholic event I went to at the University of Sydney was protested. There was a talk being given, it was my second week at university, it was being put on by some Catholic students about God's plan for love in the world. Fairly nondescript sort of talk, you think. A good talk for the first talk, first talk of the year at university. And it got protested by a whole heap of different prof- Professional protesters, you could say. 150 people came and yelled and screamed abuse at at Catholics. It was their outing for the day. For their, Their first event for the year was to have a go at the Catholics. But that made my faith stronger. That my faith is not just something that was just a personal thing. It's something that must be lived out in the world. They sometimes say that after the consecration, when we say the words of Jesus at the Last Supper, the the other most important words in the Mass are the very final words, that we're called to go. We're called to go and be Jesus in the world. We aren't called to hide away our talents, we're called to bring our gifts to others. So let's this week take another step. Each day, each week, I'm sure we've been taking new steps, a little bit more risk, to live the life of Jesus Christ, to live the life of God, is not to be afraid, but to be courageous, to be bold, to manage our risks appropriately, but to be bold in proclaiming Jesus Christ and that way of love in our world today and always. I now invite our reconciliation candidates who throughout the church, we're in our 